Almighty and everlasting God, who is given to thy servants by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us in this faith and evermore defend us from heresies and adversities. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. See how the shepherds are summoned to his cradle, leaving their flocks, draw nigh to gaze. We too thither will bend our knee, our joyful footsteps. So come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. But we turn our attention to volume two of Bishop John Jewell's works, Bishop of Salisbury, a reply to Harding of the canopy above of accidents, dividing the sacrament, figure, sign, plurality of masses, adoration of images, scripture reading, consecration under silence of the sacrifice of others receiving of application of op opus operatum of love and God remaining under the accidents whether a mouse can have a change to Christ's body when it was a mouse gets it or fly eats it will be sanctified well the fly doesn't have faith so what does the forms <clears throat> be the sacrament of hiding and covering of ignorance exposition on the two epistles of Thessalonians, sermons, and a treatise of the sacraments. University of Toronto again. Um, a reply, several replies to uh, Dr. Harding. Those two had a literary duel and back and forth letters between them. And then some sermons that he's got, the treatment of the sacraments, thousand page book. The present volume completes the controversy with Dr. Harding that rose upon Bishop Jewell's challenge sermon. It also contains expositions of the epistle to the Thessalonians, the bishop's sermons, and the treatise of the sacraments. Okay, to just gone over certain... Uh, editions and folios that we got here, there, and elsewhere. It was done in 1847. Then the Corrigenda of the Canopy, Bishop of Salisbury, where the canopy was then, or now ought, to be hanged <clears throat> under a canopy, of the reverent hanging up of the sacrament under a canopy. They often would do that. They would have it hanging down Mr. Harding, if Mr. Jewell, Master Jewell would in plain terms deny the reservation and keeping of the Blessed Sacrament, Page and Tractarians, you'll want to listen to this, for which purpose the Pix canopy served in the churches of England as of the professors of this new gospel. It is both in word and also in deed denied. It were easy to prove the same by no small number of authorities such as himself cannot but allow for good and sufficient. But he knowing that right well, guilefully refraineth from mention of that principal manner. Guileful. Oh man, talk about ad hominem. From mention of the principal matter and the better to make up heap of those articles. See the word choice? <laughs> There's such sarcasm and bite. For some show against the sacraments by denial reproveth the hanging up of the canopy, thereby showing himself like to Momus, who espied nothing reprovable in fair Venus, found fault with her slipper. Now, the, what I like is the, 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 the jewel puts up what the guy says, and then he puts his response. So you have an immediate comparison. You're not checking out a book here and a book there. <sighs> Bishop of Salisbury, this article, as it is small of itself, and therefore might the better be dissembled and passed over were it not an accessory to idolatry. 
So it is warranted of Mr. Harding's side by very simple and slender proofs. <laughs> As shall appear, it liketh Mr. Harding's for his entry to solace himself and his friends withal to call us new doctors, himself being not able hitherto to allege any one of the old doctors without force and fraud, plainly and directly, to serve his purpose. But these new doctors are neither so new nor so destitute of antiquity as these men would feign the world to believe. For touching the abolishing of the reservation of the sacrament, which Mr. Harding hath here drawn in to help out the matter, being otherwise not necessarily incident unto this article, they have the authorities and examples of good ancient old Catholic doctors in their behalf. For Cyprian said, Ponis ista recipiter, known in Cluditor. The bread is received and not shut up. Clement, whose Mr. Harding saith, was with the apostles' fellow, writeth, Tanta in altario holocausta offerantor. Quanta populus officere debiant, quod si reminiscerent, in crastinum non reserventor. Let there be so many hosts, or so much bread, offered at the altar, as may be sufficient for the people. If anything remain, let it not be kept until the morning. Origen, or Cyrillus, saith, for one book beareth both their names, Dominus Panum, Quem discipulus debat, non distiluit, ec usit servare in Christanum. The bread of our Lord gave to his disciples, he lingered it not, nor bade it to be kept until the morning. His reason is grounded upon the order of Christ's institution, for that Christ said, not take and keep, Take and eat. I can't get through one page without laughing. St. Jerome said, post communium quaequa de sacrificia superfuisent elec in ecclesia communum coinum comedantes parita consumam bant. After the communion was done, whatsoever portion of the sacrifices remained, they spent it there together in the church eating their common supper. St. Augustine likewise seemeth to say the same. The bread made to this purpose is spent in receiving the sacrament. The sickest saith that the remnants of the sacrament were burnt immediately in the fire. The Kephora saith the same remnants in some places were given to children that went to school to be eaten by them presently in the church. The like whereof is also decreed in the Council of Madiscon. So saith Gabriel Beale, a new doctor of Mr. Harding's company. Non dedit discipulus, ut ipsum honorifice conserverant, sed dated in suia usum, deacon zacipite et manducate. Christ gave not the sacrament to his disciples that they should reverently reserve it, but he gave it for their use. Say, take and eat, not take and keep. <laughs> There's some real sarcasm going on here. Thus many old doctors and yet many more we have on our side. Therefore, Mr. Harding was somewhat overseen for following of, of them to call us new doctors. I know the sacrament in old times in some places was reserved, as it may appear from Tertullian, St. Cyprian, Jerome, St. Basil, Eusebius, and others. St. <coughs> Cyprian saith women used to keep it at home in their chests. Tertullian saith the faithful used it then to have it in their private houses and eat it before other meats. Jerome saith that Exuperius, the bishop of Toulouse, used to carry it abroad in a basket. St. Basil saith that in Egypt, especially in Alexandria, every man for the most part had the sacrament in his house. Uh, yes. 
Eusebius seemeth to say the priest had it in his chamber. St. Ambrose saith men use them to carry about them, not only by the land, but also by sea and their napkins. All these were abuses of the holy mysteries in private houses, in chests, in baskets, and in napkins. Now, if Master Harding be able truly to show any such like ancient authority for his canopy, then may he say he holdeth it up, the old Catholic doctors. But for as much as Mr. Harding hath leisure to call to mind his old fable of Mamas, Venice, and such like, Indeed, they say Mamas was wont to espy faults and to control all the gods without exception, even the great Jupiter himself that sat in Rome in the capital. Therefore, his office some oftentimes was not so thankful as some others. But one great fault, fault he found with Vulcan for the making of man, for that he had set up a grate or a window at his breast, that others might peer in and espy some part of his secret thoughts. If Mr. Hardy had such a greater window at his breast, and might, <clears throat> and might look in and see his conscience, I doubt not, but they should see many more sparks of God's truth than is now outwardly do appear. As for his fair lady Venus, whereby he meaneth his church of Rome, <laughs> The world seeth, and he himself knoweth, that she hath been taken in open avoutry. And Phoebus, the Son of God, with the heavenly beams of his holy word, hath revealed it. O oh, would to God we had no cause justly to say with the prophet Isaiah, Comodo fac the es meritrix giveth us fidelis. O oh, how has that faithful city become an harlot? Barely mama shall not need now to reprove his slipper. He shall rather have to say, O planta pedis, usqua ad verticum capitis, no nest in ea sanitas. From the sole of the foot to the top of the head, there is no whole part in her. For St. Bernard complaineth of her miserable state in his time. Uh, Mr. Harding, it was about 1564, whereto we say that if he, with the rest of the sacramentaries, that's what uh, Jewel and others were called, we agree, would agree to the keeping of the sacrament, then would we demand why that manner of keeping were not to be liked. And hereupon proofs made of default in this behalf and a better way showed, in so small a matter, conformity to the better would soon be persuaded. In other Christian countries, we grant, it is kept otherwise, under lock and key, in some places at one end or side of the altar, in some places in a chapel builded for that purpose, in some places in the vestry, or in some inward or secret room of the church, as it was in the time of Chrysostom at Constantinople. In some other places, we read that it was kept in the bishop's palace near to the church, and in the holy days brought reverently to the church and set upon the altar, which, for abuses committed, was by order of councils abrogated. Thus, in diverse places, diversely it hath been kept, everywhere reverently and surely so as it might be safe from injury and villainy and miscreants and despisers of it the hanging up of it on a high altar hath been the manner of england as lindwood noteth upon the constitution's provincial on high that wicked despite not reach it under a canopy for show of reverence and honor bishop Sel Selsbury. Here, Mr. Harding showeth that this reservation of the sacrament in divers countries hath been diversely used under lock and key at the altar's end, in the chapel, in the vestry, in the bishop's palace, and all of this usage of late years. For of antiquity, saving only the epistle of Chrysostom to Innocentius, which also, as it shall appear, 
maketh much against him, he toucheth nothing. But amongst all these diversities of keeping, he hath not yet found out his canopy, and touching that he alleged of the reservation of the sacrament in the bishop's palace has seen very little to further his purpose. For whereas the sacrament was reserved only to the bishop's custody, it followeth necessarily that there are, there and other parish churches and t chapels was no such reservation. Yeah, that's fine in the cathedral, but what about in the parishes of this? Out in the hinterlands. For whereas the sacrament was reserved only in the bishop's custody. Okay, I read that. Chrysostom's epistle to Innocentius is a good witness that the sacrament was re reserved to be received of the people at the communion the next day, or in a very short time after. For it was reserved in both kinds. Oh, oh. oh, oh. And it's only been recently that both kinds has been authorized. But it's clear both by the judgment of reason and also by their own cockles in that behalf that wine in such sort and quantity cannot be kept any long time without souring. And the manner in Grecia, Greece, was during the time of Lent consecrated only upon Saturdays and Sundays. And nevertheless, to communicate of the same upon the other weekdays. For the end of this reservation in old times was not that the sacrament should be adored, but that it should be received of the people. Take and eat, not take and adore. And specifically, especially the persons excommunicate. For those, skip that sentence there. But me think if Mr. Harding doth herein as a pellis the painter sometime did in setting out King Antigonus's physiognomy for understanding that Antigonus was blind of the one side, he thought it best to paint not only with half a face, and so cunningly shadowed the deformity of the other eye. Even so, Mr. Harding showeth a certain variety of keeping the sacrament and other horrible deformities, he dissembleth cunningly and turneth from us. Law of time to use, use the comparison, but St. Jerome saith, Diabolus unicum, supported a pair to facci. The devil never showeth himself openly with his whole face. In the old times when the sacrament was kept in chests, in napkins, in baskets, in private houses, there's no danger of aberration. But under the canopy, we see not only that the effect has fallen out far otherwise, but also the very cause thereof was it was the first to the contrary. For so saith Linwood himself, Cidius representator nostris aspectibus adoranda. It is the rather offered unto our sights to be worshipped. If there were no cause else, yet is this itself cause sufficient to abolish the new order of hanging up of the sacrament under canopy. For therefore the king Ezekiel took down the bra brazen serpent and break it in pieces, notwithstanding God has specifically told Moses to erect it because he saw it abused to idolatry. Again, they themselves, upon smaller considerations, have utterly abolished the manner of reservation that was used in the primitive church, for they will not now suffer neither lay people nor women to keep it in their houses, nor boys to carry it to the sick, as the boy then did to Serapion, nor infidels, or men not christened to wear it about them, as then did St. Ambrose's brother, Satyrus. I leave the rust, the mold, the canker, and the breeding of worms, whereby that holy and reverend mystery of Christ's death is oftentimes made loathsome and brought into contempt. They themselves do testify that such things not only may happen, but have often happened. It 
It is said that Alphonsus, the king of Aragon, for the preservation of his honor and safety, so long kept the sacrament about him, that at last it putrefied and bred worms, which when they had eaten up and consumed one another in the end, there remained only one great worm, and that was the last, and had eaten all his fellows. In such cases they command that the worms be burnt and the ashes buried in the altar. The gloss itself upon the decrees says thus, it is not necessary to keep the wine. And the reason is this, quia opus asset nimia cautela, because we should need to have too much ado with, with the keeping of it. In the Council of Lateran it is confessed that the sacrament so kept hath been abused ad horribilia et nefaria facinora, to work horrible and wicked. And Mr. Hardy himself confesseth that for certain like abuses, the same reservation was in some part abolished in the Council of Bracar. To be short, touching the canopy, Linwood himself findeth fault with it, as it appeareth in the provincial, for he writeth dicator, quote, in loco mundo, et singulari debit savari. It is said the sacrament ought to be kept in a clean several place sequestered from another, whereunto he addeth ex hoc vitator, quod usus observatus in Anglia, ut in canapeo pendeat, non es commendibilis. Whoa. Hereby it appeareth that the order that is used in England of hanging up the sacrament in a canopy is not commendable. Here Mr. Harding hath causes both in general why all manner of such reservation ought to be misliked and also in special why the canopy cannot be liked. Mr. Harding, the third division. If princes be honored with cloth of estate, bishops with solemn thrones in their churches, and deans with canopies of tapestry, silk and arras, as we see in sundry cathedral churches, <coughs> and no man find fault with it. Why should Mr. Jewell mislike the canopy that is used for the honor of that blessed sacrament, wherein is contained the very body of Christ, and through the inseparable joining together of both natures in unity of person, Christ himself, very God, very man, with what face speaketh he against the canopy used to the honor of Christ in the sacrament, that sitting in the bishop's seat at Sarasbury can abide the sight of a solemn canopy made of painted boards spread over his head? If he had been of the council with Moses, David, and Solomon, it is like he would have reproved their judgments for the great honor they used and caused to be continued towards the ark wherein was contained nothing but the tables of the law, Aaron's rod, and a pot full of manna. King David thought it very unfitting and felt great remorse in his heart that he dwelt in a house of cedars. The ark of God was put in the midst of skins, that is, of the tabernacle, whose outward parts were covered with beast skins. And now there is one found among other monstrous and strange forms of creatures, manners, and doctrines, who being but dust and ashes, as Abraham said of himself, promoted to the name of bishop and not chosen, I ween, to do high service of man according to God's own heart, as David was, think it not himself unworthy to sit in a bishop's chair under a gorgeous texture or canopy of gifted boards, and cannot suffer the precious body of Christ whereby we are redeemed to have for remembrance of his honor of our part so much as a little canopy. There's something to be said with this argument. You know, if you're going to argue about taking a canopy down, because it's idolatrous, what the power of the medieval bishop with his nice little cathedral, cathedral, as I do not envy Mr. Jewell that honor by whatsoever he enjoyeth it, so I cannot but blame him for bereaving Christ of his honor in that blessed sacrament. Let's see how 
John answers. Princes used to sit under a cloth of estate, bishops and deans under painted thrones, a cloth of ours. Ergo, saith Mr. Harding, the sacrament ought to be hanged up under a canopy. I trow it is not lawful for all men to use such arguments. In such sort, Durandus reasoneth, the Ark of the Covenant was carried by the Levites. Ergo, the Pope must be carried aloft upon the deacon's shoulders. And again, they seem by practice further to reason this. The Pope is carried upon men's shoulders. Ergo, the sacrament must be carried before him, whether at soever he get go upon a fair white genet. And whereas it liketh Mr. Harding thus merrily to sport himself with bishops sitting under painted boards, certainly I reckon it much fitter for the Church of God to have painted boards than painted bishops, such as he that claimeth to be the bishop of all bishops, and yet doth not indeed any part of the office of a bishop. The bishop's chair or saul is appointed at the first as a place most convenient for him to read and to preach. But what needeth more? Such vanity of words should not be answered. He uh, didn't answer it, John. For the rest, God commanded Moses to make the tabernacle and also showed him in the mount in what order and form it should be made. Neither durst Moses or his workmen add or minish, or to alter anything of their devices, or to do anything more or less other than God has appointed him. When David of his devotion would have built a temple unto God, God forbade him by the mouth of his prophet Nathan and said, Thou shalt build me no temple. Afterwards Solomon set upon to build the temple, not when he would himself, but only when God had so willed him. Neither followed therein any part of his own fantasy, but only that self-same plat and proportion that God had given to his father. Here, Mark, good Christian, in every one of these examples, God hath bridled our devotion and hath taught us to worship him, not in such sort as may seem good in our own eyes, but only as he has commanded us. Yet can Mr. Harding, by his cunning, apply every of these same examples to prove thereby that we may honor God in such sort as we ourselves can best devise? That was evermore the root of superstition. And therefore, Almighty God saith, My thoughts be not your thoughts, nor my ways is your ways. Whoever required these things at your hands, Mr. Harding would fain and all that he would take in hand be called Catholic, and yet nevertheless maintaineth mere particular devotion, used only within this realm, and that only within these late few years, and either used or known in any other Christian country or else, therefore such as can in no wise be called Catholic. But he saith, there is now found one among other monstrous and strange forms. This, I trow, is not sobriety and modesty that was promised at the beginning. Such eloquence, eloquence would become better some other person than a man professing learning and gravity. Here and I will gladly give place to Master Harding. It is rather a testimony of his impatience. <laughs> An inordinate collar and good proof of the cause. Certainly the sacrament be both God and man is here. I know not how ungodly it is avouched. And is this very simple honor for so great a majesty? Undoubtedly, this is very strange and monstrous doctrine to teach the people that Christ being both in God, God and man, and now immortal and glorious, may canker and putrefy, and breed worms. <laughs> the time was when whoso uttered such words of blasphemy had been reckoned a monster among the faithful. But this is the just judgment of God. He giveth men up unto a reprobate mind to turn God's truth into a lie. I trust our doctrine abridgeth not any part of God's glory. 
we adore him as he's commanded us sitting in the heaven. And therefore, O oh Master Hari, ye have burnt your brethren, oh boy, and scattered their bones upon the face of the earth and wrought upon them what your pleasure was, only because they would not be traitors to God and give his glory to a creature such as bread. Chrysostom expounding the complaint of Laban against Joseph for stealing away his good rights. Quare deus meus furatus es. And we'll call it here a little over time, but uh, verse 5 of Christmas hymn 83. Child for us sinners, poor in the manger, we would embrace thee with love and awe. Who would not love thee, looking for us so dearly? Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and honor, glory and strength and blessing. Amen. Godspeed.